Today I am in New York City shooting with the brand new Fujifilm X100V. This is the latest iteration of what Fujifilm refers to as a camera for everyday moments. It features a fixed 23mm f2.0 lens that personally I find absolutely ideal for street photography. This gives you about a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view, which is perfect for documenting a variety of subjects. This camera also is fairly compact, which is ideal for taking it along with you just about anywhere. There's some nice cosmetic changes to this camera over previous models. The X100V features a top and bottom made of solid milled aluminum. It's designed with slightly cleaner edges over previous models and features a blast finish, smooth surface, alumite satin finish coating. I'm using the Chrome version but this is also available in black. Fujifilm also has added a tilt screen housing to its now 1.62 million dot touch LCD screen. This is a really welcome addition for low or high angle shot composition. And although this camera is weather sealed, the lens actually is not on its own. This was done actually to conserve space and keep the size down on this camera. And of course, if you're going to be shooting in wet weather conditions, you can add an optional filter adapter and skylight filter, let's say, to properly seal the lens. Again, this is a trade-off for size, but I really do like that we have weather sealing at least as an option. One thing that's actually really important to me is the ability to have a camera that is with you all the time. That way you have it, you're ready to shoot, it's not cumbersome, it's not big. And so sometimes you have sacrifices in, like for instance, we just have a fixed focal length lens, but honestly, I love the fact that it's with me and I don't miss stuff. The lens on the X100V has been redesigned. It's a really nice upgrade. It still features eight elements in six groups, but now it has two aspherical elements instead of one, so you're gonna get much better image quality. The lens on this camera is fairly significant and it differs quite a bit from the interchangeable 23 millimeter lenses that you have on the XF cameras. This 23 millimeter lens is actually designed with the body. So the rear element is essentially the sensor glass cover. So it's a really tight form factor, which is gonna give you a compact design, but it still retains a really high image quality. It's a really good trade-off. Unlike XF cameras, the X100V uses a leaf shutter, and it also features a built-in four-stop neutral density filter. If you're not familiar with what a neutral density filter is, it basically acts sort of like sunglasses. It cuts the amount of light coming into the camera. This is actually ideal for using wider apertures if you want a shallower depth of field in bright lighting, and it's used pretty regularly in video. I was trying to shoot some video earlier, and one thing that I find really curious about the X100 is we've now moved from a two-stop to a four-stop neutral density filter. Now I think this is an awesome addition. It makes it so that you can get a nice separation depth of field when you're in bright light for instance. However, this seems like it would be a boon for video because if you're wanting to film with a 180 degree shutter, you want to limit yourself to around 50 frames a second on your shutter speed. So the problem that I'm having with this is that the ND filter does not work in video mode. I'm hoping that this is just a little quirk because it's a pre-production model that I've got with pre-production firmware. It just seems kind of like a waste to have this on here with amazing video capabilities, but not to be able to use. The hybrid viewfinder is upgraded from previous models. So the optical viewfinder is now a 0.52 magnification with 95% frame coverage. When you flip the switch on the front of the camera, you're going to activate the electronic viewfinder, which now features a 0.66 magnification with a 3.69 million dot 0.5 inch sensor with a 16.8 millimeter eye point. So this hybrid viewfinder is noticeably larger with better resolution than previous models of the X100 series. The other thing is they have actually taken off the D-pad or the four little buttons that go under your thumb. At first I was a little skeptical of this, but actually it's something that I really like because it makes it an easier camera to use. You just get to what you need, when you need it. And again, focusing in the moment and getting images. I think that Fujifilm do this really well. So one of my favorite things about the X100V is actually the lack of what it has. So for instance, we have a fixed lens. This creates less options. I'm not bringing a bag of lenses. I'm not changing the lenses. I'm in the moment and I'm photographing. I think this is something that actually makes you more productive as a photographer, particularly if you're shooting street. One thing that I find particularly interesting about about Fujifilm is how their design aesthetic for their cameras 
they approach it from the idea that they're going to offer different cameras for different uses. So you see big differences between the X-T3 and the X-Pro3, for instance. This is actually taken a step further with the X-T100 in that we have a minimized design. In other words, there are less controls than we used to have. For instance, the D-pad is missing. I actually was skeptical of this first. I ended up liking it because what it does is it simplifies the camera. When you have one lens, you're shooting street photography, you're out and about, you have less options, and again, it's all about getting the photos in the moment. If you want more options, then a different camera probably is better, but I think for my purposes here, I really actually like this. I thought it was gonna be a problem, it's not. So despite this new minimal physical layout, we do still have custom function buttons that you can customize, and you can also set up touch gestures to get to certain settings quickly, but the X100V is anything but underpowered. We still get all of the features of the current generation of Fujifilm cameras, so this includes the 26.1 megapixel X-Trans 4 sensor, as well as the X-Processor 4. Phase detection autofocus works down to negative 5 EV, so it does really well in low light, and this camera is still pretty fast, with the ability to shoot full raw images up to 11 frames per second. We have all of the current film simulations, multiple exposure and HDR functions, and because the firmware has become more efficient across the whole range of Fujifilm cameras, the X100V has a battery life rating of 420. 20 shots. Now, the current battery ratings are a little bit dated, especially with mirrorless, because when you consider the screens on all the time, it's just kind of a dated method for measuring battery life. But let's just say I shot all day on this camera. It was on pretty much all the time and still had a little less than half battery left at the end of the day. Now, I didn't shoot a whole lot of video as I'll be saving that for the full review, but we do have considerable upgrades with video specs as well. The X100V shoots 4K video up to 30p, H.264 with no cropping. You can shoot in log. We have the Eterna film simulation and you can shoot 420 8-bit video to the card in the camera with a 10-minute limit. And this has to do with basically the size and heat dispersion, so we do have a limit. If you want unlimited video, you can optionally use the HDMI output and you're actually going to get 422 10-bit video with no recording limit. It's also worth noting that just like the previous versions of the X100, this new camera is compatible with all of the Fujifilm accessories, and this includes the converter lenses for wide angle and telephoto application. So I would not call this a review since I've only had the camera for a few hours. This is more like a preview. I will do a full review when I get a production camera that I'm able to shoot with a little bit more. So drop me a comment and let me know what you guys would like to see. Until the next video, I'll catch you guys then. Later.